a can of beans and we heated it up over the coals. Oh, oh I think we're we, live. Oh, I think we're live. I'll I'll just I'll save my I'll save my beautiful bean footage for another day. Send it to me later. All right, folks. Howdy. How y'all doing? Oh. This is Retro Reload, and I am your host, Dash V. With me today, I got a good old red bearded gamer. And we also got something else red related. Red Dead Redemption. Second one. Number two. So As so far, it's amazing. How far are you in it so far? Uh I'm there's four chapters, spoiler alert. I'm on to chapter two, but the problem is Brittany wants to play it too. So I don't rush to the storyline so she can play it too. I was gonna say you're plowing through those chapters pretty quickly. So are you are you just skipping all the side missions? Sounds like yes. I, I just try to get far enough where I can unveil the map and get deep enough so she can enjoy the game without doing all the. Because you know how the first two hours of the game is. She didn't want to do that. I didn't oh, want to wow. do the first two hours. You, you know how far I'm talking about. Actually, actually, I only know what the first thirty minutes is because I've been having to adult so hard lately that I I was able to play. I I got to the point where spoiler alert, folks, uh, but not too much of a spoiler. Um, I I haven't yet gotten to the part where it's actually open world yet. Okay, see that's the part I got through, so she had to you no know, deal with that part because it kind of sucks. Gotcha. Yeah. So so uh, it is an open world game, but it starts out very, very linear. So they teach you how to ride a horse and all this other stuff. And there's a it, what I liked about it, though, like in it to its credit, even though it's not like it doesn't start out crazy, immensely open world, uh, is that it it does do a pretty good job in terms of um, I so I actually bought um, just recently. So I bought Red Dead Redemption, the first one game of the year edition. Uh, for the 360, but it works uh, in 4K backward compatible on the Xbox One X. And I got a copy of Red Dead Redemption 2. I have not played the first one ever. It's good. Do you have the Undead Nightmare DLC with that one? It does have the Undead Nightmare DLC. Uh, that's probably one of the hardest uh, DLCs I've ever played is that one. It's actually really hard. Nice, nice. Is it is it single player campaign DLC? Yeah, um, yeah I'm pretty sure. It's been so, 10 years. So, I, so Red Dead Two, um, from what I understand, uh, this is a prequel actually to yes, it is. the game. first one. So it's well, really there's cool. Three, is... There's three Red Deads. There's Red Dead Revolver, yeah. which was on PS2. That was a single player. Then you got Red Dead Redemption One, and Red Dead Redemption Two is a prequel to those. Oh wow! So you can. Pl I've never played any of those. So. You can play this without having played this, and you can play this without having played this. So it doesn't really, I mean, doesn't really matter. You won't understand some of the, you know, kind of, you know, backstory of Red Dead, but you'll be fine playing it without, you know, knowing anything. You can go in blind, you'll be fine. But it's like certain characters you'll see, like, oh, I, I recognize who that's from. That's the extent of what happened. I like that smile. Is A O S. Oh, yeah. P H. Robert Good. Walker says my country voice reminds him of one of those voices from A O S T H. Well, I'm being anime. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, but yeah, I was trying. I was going for that that old uh, you know, that stereotypical old geezer that they got that's in like every like Western. That goes um, gold mining. Yeah, he's the, he's the old. He's always the old crusty coal miner. Right or gold miner or whatever, um, but uh, yeah, he's he's the uh, he was also in Back to the Future three. Let's see if I regret the decision. Open this map while you do that. Yeah, I thought this? that was really nice, he, folks. He's referring to the game itself. Actually, the game comes with a map inside. I actually have opened this map. It's actually so, two sides to it. It's pretty huge. It is a pretty huge map. Okay, let's see if I can put it so, together without. Um, also, also okay. interesting bit of trivia. I don't have both the discs, but you'll notice this should be enough for you to see. See what that says, folks? Disc two. Disc two. Yeah. So, um, I, I knew about it, but when I sat down, I was like, geez. I haven't seen a two disc game since 
what PS One days. Oh yeah, since since Final Fantasy right seven, that, I think so. that was um for number Metal Gear, one Metal Gears. But like uh, no Metal Gear, you got to switch CDs. I don't yeah. remember that. <laughs> you remember a boss fight switch CDs? I'm like really? Yeah, that's kind of breaks the uh, breaks the uh, suspension of disbelief. But um, yeah, so I, I do have to say, so I'm only half hour into the game, but uh, I want to play this more. Actually, I so I didn't really know a lot about Red Dead and I never really I didn't have a 360, so I didn't bother with it during 360. And uh, <laughs> the itch network says, do the do the country voice. You got to do it. So, partner, I never really played Red Dead Redemption before. And gall darn it, I figured it's about time that this whippersnapper gave it a shot. So that's the reason. No, no pun intended. Hope you know that's the only reason this video will go viral is that part. <laughs> Somebody's gonna auto tune me. Uh, Red <laughs> Dead Redemption Two. Red Dead Red 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 Dead Redemption Two Two Two. Yeah, something like that. But um, you sound like an NPC in the game. Maybe I, you know, ooh, rock star. <laughs> I like if this you, guy. If you need somebody to fill in, you know, let me, voice let me know. Hey, we, we have voice actors on here before. Maybe you can talk to them about your voice acting skills. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. So the only other one that I can do that would even remotely be like a, would only remotely be a, uh, like a Western type voice would be Droopy Dog, right? Oh God! Please don't try Red Dead Redemption, sir. You love the game, sir. It's a that's actually pretty good, game, sir. Mind your gun. That's actually sir. <laughs> so 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 overall, anyway. how do you feel about the horse riding, the sh shooting? Yeah, spoiler: you ride horses in a country western game. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. So about the horse riding, actually, um. The little bit of horse riding that I've done, I actually enjoyed it a bit more than the horse riding in um, in uh, Breath of the Wild, actually. I, I felt like I agree. You, have, you have a greater degree of control over the velocity of the horse and the acceleration and deceleration of the horse. So although one of the have things you got a I first person view yet? I haven't gotten that view yet. No, I did want to say. No, no, you, you get horse. right away. Hit the touchpad. Hit the touchpad when you play. Oh, the twice, touchpad so goes twice. right into it? Yeah. Yep. If you touch touchpad, okay. okay. all, or if you hold the touchpad, it goes to cinematic view. So now, something, so that I, something that I noticed, though, and this relates to the horse, I, I, I want to ask you, because you've gotten farther in the game than I have so far, one of the things that I'm picking up very early, and maybe it's just what I've seen so far, is it seems like the kind of game where they give you choices as if they matter, but then ultimately they don't. Well, uh, I guess spoilers away, but do the moral right thing if you want it to end well for you. That's from what I've heard, and that's how the last game was. Okay. Because if, right. you, if you if you push, okay, give me a hint. I think it's down on the D pad. It tells you your reputation, and that does matter in this game. Okay, that's all I needed to know. Because because mm -hmm. what I meant by it, it seems like it gives you choices, and they, then they don't matter is uh, early on, and I'm going to be kind of purposely vague because really the I, I feel like the intro, like it's linear. It, it kind of uh, holds you back from the open world. So we've already kind of mentioned that. But one of the things I think it does really well, at least for me, is I love story-driven games. And I didn't realize, honestly, I did. Here's how dumb I am. I, I thought that maybe this was like Doom or Duke Nukem, Right, mm -hmm. like just just mm -hmm. in a Western setting, like, and so thank you, dear. It's very story driven. Um, I got myself some taters, and I got myself so, some broccoli. But yeah, it's not Duke Nukem to the extent where you run a gun. This is you actually got to be smart in this game how you run the story. Yeah, and and I really enjoy that, and and I didn't realize it was so so yes. story rich because you know in, I kind of wasn't GTA, expecting that. GTA, you know, they're the same publisher. You can't go around destroying things. Red Dead, you can, but you'll pay for it. And I really, I really like that. So, but one of the things that I noticed is, so early on, you get involved in a gunfight. Ooh, I'm sorry if I ruined that for anybody, a Western with a gunfight. But there's a gunfight that you get into, and um, 
as part of the gunfight, you find a horse, right? That you get to kind of add to your your collection, I guess. Yes. And, um, the game tells you, you know, hey, make sure you hit your horse, you know, so it doesn't get away, blah, blah, blah. And so I'm wandering around trying to figure out because it's snowing and it's dark and I'm trying to figure out where the hell to hitch this horse. And then I hear some commotion and uh, the commotion actually sounded pr- like something pretty dark was going down. So I wanted to get in there right away. So finally, I'm just like, screw it. I know I'm going to probably lose the horse. And I, j- I just leave the horse out in the middle, of, the middle of this Almost. field, like, car- you know, total, total whiteout blizzard condition. And I just abandon the horse and go into the house and and follow along with the storyline. Five minutes later, we're, we're all out in a cinematic cutscene, you know, want, you know, wandering the trail, going back to base camp uh, with all the horses, including the one that it was like, oh, we better hitch it up or it's going to get away. So that that's what I meant by, you know, I wonder if the game, you know, sometimes developers will play these clever tricks because they know that, you, you know, gamers are going to do a certain thing. And so they'll do things like add dialogue or they'll add a situation where yeah. it appears as if you have a choice. It appears as if there's more depth in the game world than there actually is. As, as much as I would have been kind of bummed out that, damn it, I, I lost the horse. Um, I still thought it well, would have been a really cool replay thing to have to go back and, oh, I didn't hitch up my horse. And because I didn't hitch up my horse, now I don't get that horse. And maybe it affects the game. I somewhere. mean, your main horse, because you, you can... Spoiler, you can steal any horse you want. But your main horse will always be marked on a map somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I made a mistake of losing said horse. And I had to walk and find me a new one. Just like <laughs> right back to my old one to get it back. Yeah, that took an hour. I was pissed. I was like, really? My horse is nowhere near me. Yeah. So it's, it's, good map. To know, it's good to know that some of the other that, that some of the other choices, right? Like I didn't know. Yeah. I haven't gotten farther enough yet to know that there's like a reputation meter. I don't know the details, like but it does give you scenarios where you can do it the good way or the bad way and it does affect your meter like i say you push down the d-pad and you'll see what i'm talking about you'll see your mine's in the okay. middle still so you get more choices in you're still uh, if you're still with us um what are your thoughts on the game so far if you have it <laughs> yeah i assume he does because he says i sound like an npc from the game oh yeah that's right so um, but I'm gonna do a quick shout out while you eat real quick. Oh, absolutely. I'm I'm just gonna eat potatoes so that you can get a word in edgewise. All right. So me and my girlfriend we were recently at um, Universal Studios because I live in California. I've never been. It was Halloween Horror Nights, which again I never been to Universal, so I've never been to Horror Nights. So right before, because we did a two o'clock till you know Horror Nights is over. Mm-hmm. So I, I got to enjoy the first part of Universal. You I've never been. Horror. H O R R O R, right? Not yes, horror. W H O R H O R O R for the Halloween. Okay, I'm like, Halloween wow, thing. you take your girlfriend to Horror Nights? Like, wh- how in the world? How is she on board with that? Like, I know she's not that. So I don't think that she'd I, be cool with you, you know. I get that kind of freedom. Anyway, so right before we. <laughs> this is an open right, release. Yeah. Right before <laughs> the Horror Nights actually started, we sat down and we were having beers. Yes, I drink people. No. You drink anyway, people? so. Yes, I drink people. But anyway, we're drinking beer. And this woman and her two friends like, can we join you? Sit down. I was like, sure. So I happened to get on top of gaming. And she's like, oh, you're a gamer. I was like, yeah. She's like, oh, I work for Treyarch. If you know who Treyarch is, they're a publisher for Call of Duty. She's like, which, I was like, you know, I work for them. I, I, if I remember right, she like, you know, hires people. She's like, would you like a free copy? I was like, I mean, if you're serious, yeah. So she gave me her card and says, email me and I'll send you a free copy. Wow. So after she left, my girlfriend came back with the food. Is you know, we, they were there for a while, and one of the people forgot their sweater. So we had a business card, so we called her real quick. Hey, you forgot your um, sweater. So they came back, thanked us. The next day, I emailed her. I was like, her name's Jennifer Ripley. And yes, I can give the shout-out I asked. I was like, if you're serious, I'll still take a copy. She's like, what system? I was like, PS4. Within a week, <laughs> I got the new Call of Duty with a... Nice note, which I'm keeping, obviously. It says, hey, Jeremy, enjoy the game. Nice to meet you uh, at Universal, Jennifer Ripley. So I thought that was cool because, you know, within a week I had a game. So I have a chance to play it because I've been busy with my girlfriend's birthday. I went to the Green Bay Packer game, my first game. Then Red Dead 2 was out. So, yeah, I'm going to get a chance to play it. 
Yeah. So speaking of, uh, haven't gotten a chance to play it, but uh, so that's really awesome that you actually got, um, you got, you got a free copy of the game. Um, I didn't get these free, but I did want to um, make sure folks know uh, on the Xbox One X, Portal 2, which has been backward compatible, I think, for a while, uh, now runs in uh, on the Xbox One X in 4K, which is through the backward compatibility, which is awesome. But also the entire Orange Box collection now runs backward compatible on Xbox One and Xbox One X. And... Uh, and it's in 4K. So really awesome. So if you want to play Portal 1 and Portal 2 on a console in 4K, Xbox One is your jam, my friend. Specifically the Xbox the Xbox One X. So um, Jeremy stepped out for just a moment. He needs to go, uh, he needs to go freshen up. Um, so Brittany says that uh, that the that the um, the young woman that uh, Jeremy met at Universal also said her son doesn't play the games as much anymore. Um, nice. Very nice. So, Brittany, have, what do you think of Red Dead so far? She hasn't played yet. She'll play tomorrow, probably. Oh, so you're, you're just warming, the, uh, you're just warming yeah. the pool. So, I got to pack up the PS4 tonight, take it over, and we'll play when we get a chance. So you got Red Dead on the PS4 then? Yes. So Even though like, my Xbox wants at her house, which would have been easier, but oh well. I think, you know, a word on that. If you have the original, like if you have the normal PS1, or I'm sorry, PS1. I'm mixing the machines totally. If y'all have the regular PS1, you no. Know, if, if you have the PlayStation 4 regular edition. Uh, yeah, not the, Pro. Right. Uh, and the Xbox One regular edition, like the launch models, the base units, definitely. Well, I have pretty much. <laughs> yeah, PS4 is the better way to go. Okay, on the original models. On the original models, yes. So okay. original models, Red Dead Two, best way to go is the PlayStation Four all the way. Uh, you're going to get higher frame rates. You're going to get um, higher resolution. Now, if you are looking at the the souped up models, the Xbox One X versus the PS4 Pro. Absolutely not even a comparison. The Xbox on. One X version is the way to go if you're going for the premium experience on the premium versions of the consoles. It's got higher frame rates. It sustains the higher frame. Both of them are both of them shoot for a 30 frames per second uh, render target. Uh, the yeah. Xbox One X hits it almost 100 percent of the time. The PS4 Pro can tend to stutter and chug in some really busy scenes. Uh, quite a bit more than the Xbox One X. Um, and then if you look at the base models, right, the Xbox One versus the PS4, right, non-X and non-Pro editions, uh, it's almost, you know, the, the the opposite. They're both still trying to target that 30 frames a second, but instead of trying to do it at near 4K uh, or native 4K, actually, if you're, you're playing it on the One X, uh, on the base models, they're trying to target uh, the PlayStation 4 version targets 1080p, the Xbox One X, or I'm sorry, the Xbox One version targets a lower uh, resolution. I don't remember exactly what the resolution is off the top of my head. Um, but the lowest resolution experience is the base model Xbox One. And Brittany has, likes your shirt, by the way. She's about to that? go off lunch. Brittany likes your t-shirt, by the way. Oh, yeah, a little bit off topic. Multipass. So, um, so yeah, if, if you... Xbox One versus PS4, PS4... Don't even think about it. Just, just, just keep going on PS4 and be happy. If you have PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, go the One X route. Even if you're a PS4 fanboy, like with this game, it doesn't pay. This, the 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 superior resolution, frame rate is all on the One X. Well, I don't have either, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's a there's a glitch. I'm going to get spoilers, but there's a certain road. I haven't found it yet. But if you walk down it, horses spontaneously spontaneously combust, a.k.a. they catch fire. Whoa, what? Are you serious? Yeah, you look it up. <laughs> and, and I've seen quite a few uh, funny videos just from like people playing around. Like one guy had a guy on his knees begging for his life. You know, the, 
you know, the main character, Hishani Air, you hear a duck squeal and hit the ground. Like, he was aiming for the duck. You know, he was viewing the guy. Shani Air to intimidate the guy. He hit a duck somehow. I'm like, what are the odds of that? That is awesome. Because, you know, there's not a lot of birds in the air. I mean, I haven't bothered trying to shoot one yet. Yeah. But, yeah, you Folks, can... If you've got a 4K TV, this is definitely going to be a nice showcase for the 4K TV. Um, the game supports HDR, high dynamic range. Um, it also on the Xbox One X supports native 4K. And one of the things that I really like, so this this game caught a lot of flack for actually only being 30 frames per second. And what I have to say is, I think that it was probably more important for them to... Um, there are some games that try to more aggressively target the higher frame rates or they'll give you the option, right? And I think that's where a lot of people's uh, disappointment came with this is there were folks that wanted to be able to select, you know, better graphics or faster gameplay, but the smoother gameplay. Yeah. But Rockstar made a decision that, that they were going to 30 was going to be their budget. And you know what? I, when you look at the game and how well it looks, it, it doesn't look like they were trying to please two different sets of folks. It looks like they were really just trying to make a game that both looked and played solid. Yeah. And so it, it really does kind of show when you're playing the game. So I would rather have a locked but stable uh, 30 yeah. frames per second. than and a lag. Very Busy areas. Yeah, constantly changing, um, you know, 60 to 25 to 42, you know. <laughs> Frames I hate that argument though. Oh, it's you know, the frame rates and all that. It's like shut it up. Just let them make their game. If it's bad, yeah. then they'll buy it. So this game looks amazing. Like my mom came in and was like, "Is that a movie?" I was like, "No, that's a game." She's like it looks real, and I'm like it does. Yeah, from this, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. The Itch Network says he's on chapter three, um, near the end. And it's and he likes it a lot. He says uh, riding the horses gets kind of old sometimes. Well, I understand that because it's a huge map. And it's like okay, well, it's not like GTA. You can't get an airplane. You can't get a car. You kind of just got to ride a horse or walk. I mean, there's other methods. I'm not going to reveal, but for the most if part, it intended for man to fly. He would have given him a set of wings. Exactly. Uh, off to back to work. Brittany has to go back to work. Brittany, thank you for chilling out with us and hanging out. Thanks for keeping Jeremy in line and the offline. What? I didn't do anything. <laughs> so, so yeah. There's a couple words on the install, though. You, I mean, you gave kind of a, a bit of a taste in it. Um, I was, I actually was braced for quite a bigger install than what I actually got. Like, honestly, it took me less than. An hour. I said about an hour. I was shocked. My internet's slow. Yeah. I went down and, and you know, everybody's hitting the servers when I was doing it. So it's like, I'm surprised it downloaded. It was huge. Though. It was... Yes. So it pulls most of the game content. It pulls most of it off the discs. If, if yeah, that's why it. there's two discs. So. Yeah. So there's two discs. It took me, I think, roughly an hour. I was doing other things when I, I you know, I don't, I, I no longer labor under the delusion that I can take a game I bought, just pop it in and start playing. Like now I'm like, the first game is the watch the installer game, right? So I, I popped in the discs, let it do its thing. I think I think it was somewhere just under an hour, um, but it was 84 gig to install the one X version. Um, and then it was only like a three or four gig download off the uh, off the the Internet. So it looks like at least on the Xbox one version of it, it looks like. I want to say the 4K assets are right here actually on the discs, which is uh, a difference from a lot of the other games. A lot of the other games, you install the game and it's the Xbox One version of the game, and then there's this massive download of all the 4K assets and everything. So I was kind of expecting the same thing here, but I didn't. I, I was actually watching the install, and um, the 84 gig came off the two Blu-ray discs, and then yeah. there was only like a 3 or 4 gig download over the internet which was probably like day one patches or something like that so um anybody that's like thinking it's going to be this horrible crazy all night ordeal if you buy the physical copy that should not be the case if, if you're going to download the whole darn thing digitally then it's probably going to take a while and um online isn't available yet the beta testing starts this month and if it's ending like gta was it's gonna be a shit show 
Because I remember when GTA launched, I didn't get on for like five days just because the servers kept crashing. Yeah. So we'll kind of same experience the same thing. So now, are you an itch network? Anybody in the chat, actually, feel free to chime in here. Itch, are are you looking forward to the online uh, capabilities? Um, and Jeremy, what about you? Are you you looking for the online? My crew's playing for the launch because um, I'm playing for my GTA Five crew, so we all went over, and a lot of guys from my form are like, all right, but they'll drop off over the months. But there's be enough guys there for a while. I have no idea how online is going to be. Is it going to be just like GTA? You got to buy a lot of stuff, a lot of missions, or is it more, okay, you guys can go screw around, which I'm looking more forward to, just messing around. Go hunting. No, go turn down bad guys. Go be bad guys. So, you, so, you're looking, so you're looking forward to the online then? Yes. Yeah. So Itch, Itch Network is a, a little bit more, um, he, he's a little more, I guess, um, my my speed on this. Um, he says um, he's not at all looking forward to the online. Um, he's just planning to play through it, beat it, and then he's going to move on to the next game. Okay. He's not, says he's not See, a big multiplayer not, guy. Neither am I, but the way Rockstar did GTA V, and in fact, I have 80 days online, shows me I'll probably enjoy Red Dead. Because yeah. GTA is pretty much the only game I play online for the longest time. And I got bored of that because yeah. 80 days is a lot. To be clear, I don't have anything wrong with the fact that they're pursuing online. I don't have anything wrong with with folks that are going to enjoy the online portions of it. Just online is not really my deal. Huh. He's on PS4. I should add an itch. And his friends. Now, what would be nice is if this is a maybe. Maybe this will be another game that supports a crossplay. Um, that's hard to say because I know the recent crossplay. Out with the game was kind of iffy. That's right. I'm changing information in here. <laughs> oh no! What I okay? Yeah, let me yeah. take a picture of that real quick. I, I hear you, itch. If uh, it, I and I do agree with you, itch. If if two things, if they support crossplay, right? And I have other friends friends that are playing online. I might actually give it a shot. But um, I, I don't know. Like, I, I tried playing Fortnite with my son, and it's an incredibly frustrating experience. I've only played twice, and twice I was super drunk playing. So, I think <laughs> real experience. No, I mean, I was, I was really drunk the whole time. I don't, I don't, you probably still could have kicked my ass. Wow. That, that's how bad I am at that game. Like, I, I don't, I, like, like, I don't, I don't want to be, I either want to shoot stuff. Or I want to build something. I don't want to do both, right? Like I don't. I don't want to like build something and shoot people and try to not get shot at. Like that's not that's not fun to me. Like building a house or a fort while getting shot at with a rocket launcher is not my idea of fun. Yeah. So after the twice, I was like, my friends like, just play. I'm like I'm good. Yeah. Drunk me didn't enjoy it. So sober me really wouldn't enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. It, it. I don't hate on anybody that wants to to play that. Game. My son loves the game. Loves it. Um, does he do the dances? He does. He does the dances and all that other uh, stuff. Like, I almost thought, like when they started doing like the capture the flagish type things, where like you can actually die and respawn. Um, those actually have me interested in maybe, maybe coming on board and playing because it, it's a totally different dynamic when the 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 permanence of death is kind of taken out of it, right? Like if if I know I can die and just keep coming back, I mean, there's at least a chance that I can kind of get to know the map and get to understand. Yeah. If I get murked every and, for first five minutes of a game, I'm going to get used to it. Right, right. And I know that there's a sandbox mode now. There's a playground mode. Um, but here's my experience with the playground mode, right? I'll be playing the playground mode with my son, and he switches it from, you know, uh, co-op to, to, you know, uh, competitive. Starts shooting at me, kills me, right? Thinks it's hilarious, right? So then I go to try to hunt him down, right? I find him. I get him down to, like, he's almost dead. He switches it back to co-op. Yeah. I'm like, you son of a gun. So so only having two people in the playground mode is incredibly boring. So, I mean, yes, you could learn the map, but, like, if there's no stakes to it, like, if there's no way to, like, win the game or win the match, it's kind of boring to just walk around for the sake of walking around. I would around. play that round. Um, so it, 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 
so the playground mode is i guess good for learning controls in the environment but there's no purpose to learning the controls in the environment like i kind of need like a story i kind of need like a mission and then when i play online it's just too it's too rogue there's just not like it's just a complete chaos free for all and i i get that that some people like that and that's what some people are looking for but it's just not my cup of tea and to talk about when you're playing online and the kids are old enough to be your your own kids and they're like can't add your best you're like uh no there's like there's like a creepiness factor behind it if you had a little kid right that's what me and him were talking about so yeah these little kids are trying to add me. I'm like, I don't think so. Yeah, FP, FP, you're right. I'm That's sad. Me. I'm online. Hey, I'm like 10. I'm old enough That's to be your dad. Yeah. No one. This one F- I'm FP, by the way. I had to switch accounts. Ah, okay. Fighter pilot. Ah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So one of the things that, that really um, kind of gets me too, though, is just hearing my son talk about it and the detail that he goes in. Like, make no mistake. I don't think that I don't think that that Fortnite is like a, a simple game at all. It, there's lots of kind of layers to it. Um, weapons and how you use the weapons, the different game modes and the strategies that you can employ, um, you know, all the different vehicles and things like that. You can have the shopping carts, the, you know, the go carts, all this other stuff. There's quite a bit of complexity to the game. That's actually one of the, my biggest turnoffs is that I realize and listening to my son just talk about it or watching him play, there's so many layers to the game. Somebody like me that's just going to sit down casually and play for like an hour or two at most a week, yeah. there's no way in hell I'm ever going to be, you know, very, good. you know, good. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to constantly, I will only exist to basically increase other people's kill counts. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, because I know some guys that play eight to 10 hours a day. It's like, I can't eight to 10 hours all day. Yeah. Yeah, well, one game, because that's boring to me. Yeah. So, so for me, it's kind of like, you know, Red Dead single player is kind of more my, my speed. It doesn't really matter if I haven't picked up the game in, you know, a month, two months, a couple weeks, a day. Um, I can you might forget what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, once I reorient to the controls, it's pretty much just pick up where I, you know, left off. Pick up where I left off, and and the the difficulty curve on most of these games nowadays is relatively constant. So it feels like it feels like those single player experiences are more my personal speed. So uh, there's an article uh, a while back that we talked about where uh, you know there were folks giving their impressions as to whether or not single player was dead. It's um, not dead. Right I prove that. <laughs> I really hope that games like this prove that the single player experience is still alive and well, but that there can be room for multiplayer. I think another game that kind of did that single player experience is solid, but then they dabble in multiplayer. Um, you know, Drake's, you know, the uncharted series there, right. With Drake. Yes, the uncharted series. <laughs> and, um, uh, H Network says games are super easy these days, which is true because mm-hmm. there's Atari and Nintendo games from back in the day. I still can't be. And he says, I think player single player is going niche. I hope not because for the most part, I like single player games. Yeah. There's a reason I'm waiting for, for Ace Combat because Ace, I, mean, I think there's a good multiplayer mode, but I'm after the single player on Ace Combat. By the way, it's in two months, three months. Yeah, I think the, the challenge is, right? The single player. Oh, oh wait, wait. Fox shots in here. Wait, what? Are, Fox, what? Yeah, he's like, not to brag, but I'm playing right now. Well, why aren't you on his show, huh? Damn it, Kyle. I mean, <laughs> sorry. Damn it, you. No, it, it. I do have to say, if you want to experience both the games, right? I think I already mentioned before, Xbox is definitely the platform. You can play them both on, you know, um, both at 4K. Uh, The first game actually upscales incredibly well. If you don't believe me, (laughs) check out some of the reviews online. Um, Some of these, some of the scenes in this game upscale very, very, very well. You should Um, send Foxshot a link to this one real quick so you can join us real quick. 
Oh, I don't know. Is Fox, does Fox think he's going to actually join, or is he just is he teasing us? He says, I didn't know. Why well, I sent him a link. I didn't know. Did you send him a link? Oh, shoot. Not yet, but my fucking computer's running slow, so yeah. Oh, you language. broke the F-bomb barrier. Yeah, we're almost done. Let me send see. a link. I, I'm is working it? on it. Gosh. Guys, I'll spin you guys a yarn, because that, that word was used in the game. I got nothing interesting to say. I got my first tattoo recently. Yay me. Got the Green Bay Packer logo. Shock on that one. So, Fish Network. What games have you playing yourself? What videos have you posted lately? Well, Dash V does his thing. Mm -hmm. hey, he added me on PlayStation. I had him on a phone. Bam. All right. So I sent Kyle the invite. I know you're listening. I miss him. It's gorgeous hair. Because, you know, me and you are both bald. Every time he's on the show, I feel like I need to, I, I want a pizza. I know. I feel like I need to grow my hair again. But I don't have any hair. It's because your, your lady friend, right? No, it's because I got bad genetics. <laughs> you, you know the struggle, Chris. My goodness. So, H Networks uploads some few podcasts, and he's played some Dragon Quests. Yeah. Worked on a really weird Pokemon Red Let's Play. Huh. I think, okay, you know, Itch, Itch Network what? brings up some good, some good points about, um, you know, I do think, ultimately, I think multiplayer does have some financial in business edges over single player. Um, if you look at it, um, the I mean, you're not necessarily going to, short of doing things like speed runs or things like that, or high score competitions, generally a lot of single player games, like this one, for example, um, you're not going to have, you're not going to have like Red Dead 2 single player tournaments, for example. Right? Yeah. So, but, but with a multiplayer game, right, like Call of Duty or whatever, absolutely, you could do tournaments and sponsorships and all kinds of, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, so I, I think that the investment in single player games, it definitely can cost a lot more for a company to invest in a single player experience. Sometimes the replay value can be lower because, uh, especially in a game like, you know, Red Dead 2, I've seen some people uh, say that they started out really, really excited with it. Um, you know, well, they started out kind of get me to the open world, get me to the open world. And then once they got to the open world, they were like, wow, this is amazing. And then after three, four days of the same kinds of, you know, side quests, they just said, I'm just going to go back to the story and finish this darn thing because I want to be done. So um, the, the, the upshot of multiplayer is that you know, to a certain extent, it can kind of be a new game every every time. I mean, the weapons are the same, the maps are the same, but the experience can be completely different depending on the teammates that you get, depending on the foes that you find yourself facing off against. Um, you know, the game, there's quite a bit of variability in, in each match and in the outcomes, depending on how people are paired up. So I, I do think that you're, uh, that you're right, Itch, that there's some definitely some financial, you know, incentives there you can charge money to people for the service of being able to connect online and pay with their play with their friends every major you know sony's doing it now nintendo's doing it uh, microsoft is doing it um you can do the tournament gaming thing uh all that stuff so i i hope that single player doesn't become a niche in fact um brian shea actually ran, wrote an article that was the one the article I was talking about, there was an article in Game Informer a couple months back that actually talked about how um, he he put forward the idea that single player is not dying. It's actually evolving. So maybe that evolution means it becomes a niche. But but Brian's argument from Game Informer was that um, there will be fewer multiplayer games, but the mo or I'm sorry, single player games, but the single player games that do come out will be or be good heavier hitting much better single player games because it just it requires that in order to make it pay off right like you have to convince like detroit become human you have to convince millions game. of people to buy this game and you have to convince them that this is an experience they're not going to find in any other game and one of the things that that single player can do 
is it really can kind of guide an experience. It's very hard to have an intro as compelling as Red Dead 2 in a multiplayer game. So um, there are games that attempt to do that, like Destiny. Um, but once you get into the multiplayer, you realize the story didn't actually matter. So in here, okay, um, story matters a bit more. I have a question for Hitch Network. He says he's doing a really weird Pokemon Red. I'm a fan of Pokemon. I have Pokemon Red in my Game Boy right now, actually. So tell me, what's weird about this gameplay? Or Let's Play. Switch. Hitch, sorry. Yeah, sell me on this Let's Play, Itch. I, 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 so I actually to. do like Let's Play. I, I will watch a good Let's Play. So let's hear it, Itch. Let's see if I get no spoilers. Well, I'm looking at election results over here. <laughs> and I think uh, I think Kyle is teasing us, by the way. I sent him the link ages ago. I need to talk to him about his not committing, even though we didn't tell him. Oh, wow. The Itch Network. I'm very intrigued. So, so you're a Let's Player, or at least you're becoming a Let's Player, but you hate Let's Play. Despite the fact. Now, now I'm more intrigued. Go on. Not, yeah, I, I hope that this experience doesn't leave you hating yourself. Because we love you, Itch, because you're here with us right now. <laughs> Come on, computer. Stop being stupid. Oh, my goodness. Here comes Kyle. Oh, sorry. Give me just a second. I'll be right back. That's all right. The Itch Network says he made a Let's Play of Chrono Trigger, but filmed it documentary style with a made-up character named Tex Andrews. <sighs> Wow. Okay, so, I have to check this out. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to check that one out. Is is Tex Andrews was that inspired at all by Tex Murphy? So he's ma oh okay, so he's making another he's gonna make a Pokemon Red Let's Play in documentary style. Uh, you have to keep us character. updated on that because I want to see this now. I'm interested. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I uh, we were watching election coverage and such, and I did not realize we were on tonight. So I'm why? sorry. About that. Why are you doing that to yourself, no. my friend? Like, I don't why? know. I don't know. Watching this show is probably a lot better right now than uh, watching election coverage. So. Although you know, like, 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 ignore the game for a moment, right? Like, Red Dead Redemption could could in many ways describe this current election, couldn't it? Oh, I'm sure it could. The Wild West, anything can happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's about as political as I'm going to get on the show. <laughs> here. Well, it's good to see you guys. Gotcha. So, uh, we're second, just, Kyle, Kyle well, it's been... It's, you, yeah, I guess I don't have my camera on right now. So It's been a while, man. We, we've missed you. We've missed you and we've missed the pizza parlor. Oh, I have definitely missed you guys. Uh, the pizza parlor is not in at this time. We're oh. undergoing some redesign. So, so, so were you, so were you messing with us, or have you really played Red Dead Redemption Two? Oh no, yeah, I bought it. I actually, so I'm not really a rock star um, <laughs> kind of person, to be honest. I, right. I actually just recently bought uh, L.A. Noir, and I tried that. I played GTA Five. Um, just not super big into them, but I have found that I like Red Dead Redemption 2 the best of what I have played so far. So, I think the last Rockstar game I played was Bully Scholarship Edition on the uh, Wii. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was a game that I enjoyed but felt dirty. Right. I, it's kind of the same way on this one, too. Um, and I mean, I think the the GameStop lady had point or not GameStop, uh, GameSpot reviewer um, had pointed that out in her review. But like, you kind of have to be bad to a certain extent, and like, I'm not really used to that, so it's a little bit different. Uh, let's be honest, you're always bad. Oh, uh, Jeremy, don't make me look bad. Oh, but Jeremy, <laughs> he is so good at it. <laughs> he is. <laughs> So the itch was one, beautiful how, hair. how bully was. Um, has anybody else besides me here played bully? I know about amazing it. Amazing game. No. I, I played it when I was younger. Amazing. I, did you, I play it. Did you play it on the PlayStation 2? 
Is, I, I can't hear you. One more time, you broke up. Did you did you play it on the PlayStation Two? Yes, and I remember I, you know, speed ran through it for the most part because this is such a good game. Like I wish to make another one. Yeah. Why don't you just say that? But you so ahead. you wish you wish that they do like a remaster of it. Not even remaster. Oh, I'll be okay with a remaster too. But I wish to make a new one, just like you know, Red Dead a sequel. Yeah. So I so Jeremy, uh, in answer to your question, it's Jeremy enjoyed it. Played it on the PlayStation Two. I played it on the uh, on the the Wii. Um, actually, my wife and I took turns playing the game, and um, we we enjoyed it. We it it's it's a different kind of game you can kind of, it's almost like red dead in that um you can kind of establish a reputation right and you can be yeah yeah like like as the bully right you can you can choose who you bully uh to, to a certain extent and you can choose you know who you help out bully you are and so you can kind of be like the like the benevolent bully who like you know is looking out for the little folks right and that kind of thing or you can be the you know the stereotypical you know uh, Saturday morning cartoon bully, you know, of like, give me your lunch money, you little wimp. Right. Um, so that was kind of neat, but, but like Kyle was saying with, with, uh, Red Dead and some other rockstar games, there's some, there's some modes where you don't get a choice about whether to be good or bad with something like you have to be bad in this particular area. So, so you have these opportunities where you can kind of choose, do you want to be like a truly bad, bad, or do you want to just be like kind of bad and then, but you have a heart now and then. Uh, so it, it's an enjoyable game, but me personally, like I would occasionally just leave it feeling dirty. Yeah. <laughs> so the best way I can describe it, just, just left it not, not really enjoying what it was that I had to go through with. So, yeah. Um, which, which I guess in, in a way is to say like, um, uh, the the characters have some 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 depth to them, I guess, is the way to 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 do it, right? Like, I mean, the game doesn't the game doesn't mislabel itself. The game is called Bully, so um, it's not called Hero, right? If if you just were the arguably, if you're just were the bully looking out for the little guy all the time and only doing good stuff, you wouldn't be a bully. You'd be a hero, right? So right. yeah. So this is kind of like your anti-hero type type games so if you like anti-hero type games um very heavily story driven so the graphics for the wii were actually pretty good i think that that was one of the few games where for a while the definitive edition was actually on the wii that saying something too yeah i mean <laughs> yeah. It, it, for a while it had the until the more recent remasters it had the best graphics um, some might even still consider it the definitive edition of the game because not only does it contain all of the original content plus some more content, um, but uh, it also had Wii controls, uh, which for certain parts of the game, like when the bully starts using the slingshot and stuff like that, uh, the Wii motion controls actually really do add to the experience in a way that none of the other platforms um, kind of emulated. Yeah, I've I've heard something similar about um, Resident Evil Four as well. That like those motion controls just really make it great on the Wii too. But I haven't had a chance to play it yet. So absolutely, absolutely. The the in fact, one of the things I know I'm in the minority here. But um, so I thought Resident Evil Four. I actually bought Resident Evil Four on the GameCube, and never or I got it for Christmas or something long time ago, um, and never got around to playing it because of adulting. Later, I ended up picking it up. Uh, I decided I wanted to actually play it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I two minutes into the thumbstick thing, I'm like, you know what? I heard there's a version on the Wii, and I really had enjoyed uh, Metroid Prime and the and the motion controls. So I, I played uh, Resident Evil 4 uh, on on the um, the Wii, and I enjoyed it so much. I, I beat it multiple times, did multiple playthroughs, unlocked just about every mode and extra, and... and the Wii version was just packed with extras and everything. Wow. Now, later, they re-released it on other platforms as well. But I didn't have that much fun with the Resident Evil until um, either before or since until Resident Evil 5 Gold Edition with the uh, PlayStation uh, 3 move controls. Um, same thing. Played through that game with my son in, in couch co-op. 
unlocked just about every single, you know, thing that there was to unlock, played through all the different, you know, um, you know, all the different modes and everything was really bummed out to find out that Resident Evil 6 and beyond had completely ditched and abandoned any motion controls. I thought that um, it was just done so well and, and it was so different from the way that you're used to playing Resident Evil. For me, it was really tough to go back to like <laughs> analog sticks after I've been able to like, literally I could hack at the zombie with like I'm hacking at a zombie, yes. right? <laughs> like, and now you got me back to like, boring. Yeah, it doesn't it just doesn't do the same thing for me that's cool because i didn't realize um resident evil 5 i know a long time ago you talked about playing that in an episode but uh i didn't realize that had motion controls gold on that one oh okay just the gold edition you have to have gold edition yeah which actually was complete bullshit for folks that were early adopters because if you bought if you'd purchased resident evil uh five um and then purchased all the dlc which would basically amount to the gold edition. Mm -hmm. They never released a patch for Resident Evil five proper to, wow. to, to they, they, they claimed a whole bunch of technical limitations and Sony patching procedures and limitations and everything. Um, so the, the, so a lot of people were so disenchanted, right? That, cause a lot of people had bought like the original game and then two or three DLCs, and then they just wanted like, oh, okay, there's two more DLCs left. Well, I might as well get Gold Edition and get the move controls. And then when they, yeah. you know, I, I, and then so some of them thought that if they just bought the extra DLCs, that would give them Gold Edition. And then they they spend all that extra money to find out. Not only did you spend more than anybody else because they pulled, they paid full price for the game, right? Imagine you pre-ordered the game, paid full price. Now imagine you paid full price for every DLC, and now hey. there's a Gold Edition that's like. 25 to 30 bucks <laughs> that literally has everything that you just paid paid almost 100 bucks for and oh by the way that one has the motion controls not none of the single patches that you downloaded that you just paid almost 100 plus bucks for yeah has, has that so wow well yeah gold edition did not sell as well and, and All right, honestly, guys, i gotta go okay yeah All right. we'll see you Thanks jeremy you see you jeremy Thanks for joining us. So, um, so yeah, so I only actually played Resident Evil Gold Edition at all. I, first, I played the demo of Resident Evil 5, uh, like the normal demo. Mm -hmm. And the graphics looked good at the time for, you know, PS3 and everything blew yeah. away anything we'd seen before. But I just yeah. couldn't do the thumbstick thing after I haven't played Resident <laughs> Evil 4 on the Wii, right? Right. And so it's kind of like it looks way better, but it, to me, it played way worse. And so I just kind of set it aside and then, you know, fast forward like three, four years later, I've gone on to get like a PlayStation Plus subscription, right? So I could have all my saves backed up in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And one month, you know, Resident Evil 5 Gold Edition was free to PlayStation Plus, you know, subscribers. So I'm like, I like free. And so, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, not really free. I paid for the subscription. But, right, you know I mean? right. So I downloaded it and then find out, holy crap, like it's got motion controls, right? And then... Um, and then when I went to go buy it, I was actually at a, so I played it with my son couch co-op again. Uh, and I'm using the move control. I actually went out and bought move controllers to play the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and I really enjoyed it. And then I wanted to buy the actual game and I was there and I'm, I'm at the store and, um, it was a used game store, like a mom and pop shop. So I, I go yeah. and I just grab resident evil four. Um, and I, or Resident Evil 5, rather, and I take it up to the thing, and he goes, oh, wait, didn't you, you bought it, you bought the Move controllers last week or a week ago or whatever to to, to play, you know, this game, right? And like, yeah, yeah, he goes, it doesn't, it doesn't work on that one. You have to get the Gold Edition. I'm like, what? And then I looked wow. it up because I thought the guy was bullshitting me because the Gold Edition was like $5 right. $10 more. So right. I'm thinking he's trying to like upsell me. <laughs> and like, got all the DLC. All I want is a physical copy of the game. No, sure enough, I looked it up and there was this huge, huge fiasco about it. Wow. And so, you know, he did me a solid. I bought the gold edition and um, I actually have it. I think I showed it off in a previous show. Somehow I got Resident Evil 5, the 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 Steelbook edition. Yeah. But it had the gold edition uh, disc in it. Huh. 
So, because yeah, Gold Edition never had a steel book. So I've actually got the steel book and it's got like the behind the scenes <laughs> making of DVD and it's got like all this extra stuff. Yeah. Um, all this extra physical stuff that the gold edition didn't come with, but then it has the gold edition disc. So oh uh, well that's that's cool. I know because yeah, I had worlds. played I had played five as well, but I'm gonna have to get four on the Wii and try that with the motion controls. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I understand where Itch is coming from. Itch Network in the chat is saying that uh, that uh, the motion controls always pushed him away. Mm-hmm. Um, so he just never really he never really gave him a chance. Um, I got to say, I'm hit and miss with the motion controls. There was a lot of games where it was really gimmicky and, and everything. But I felt like for for games where you're aiming at stuff on the screen, um the level of speed and precision that I had with point and click was probably the best I've had in gaming short of having an actual like mouse and keyboard experience. Yeah. You well, know, it's, I... not, it's still not as good as a mouse and keyboard experience, but if I had a choice between mouse and keyboard motion controls or thumbsticks, I would take them in exactly that order that I just said <laughs> mouse and keyboard whenever I can have it. Unless right. it's a platformer, right? If it's a if it's a first person or a third person game where I have to aim at stuff and shoot at stuff on screen in like a 3D environment, mm-hmm. I want mouse and keyboard. If I can't have that, give me motion controls. If I can't have that, I guess I will grudgingly take <laughs> grudgingly take one of these dealios, but I'm not. <laughs> well, and I'll say um Breath of the Wild, the how they use the motion controls for the bow shooting, they did that really well because that just felt really natural and easy to to aim it correctly i prefer that a whole lot like much better over the, the joysticks the mode, right oh yeah oh yeah it's really precise and just feels really good so yeah, you can really get in the uh, really get in the zone there so the only bummer yeah. is that they they kind of they they gimped that feature a little bit um originally that game it was intended that um when you have the the um the the wii u controller yeah that when you can aim with the Wii U controller and see like a, a zoom up of what you're ah. aiming. And so that was part of why they did the slow-mo in the first place. Because they knew that it was, for some people, it's disorienting to be like doing one thing on here. <laughs> but like literally their idea was that like in the game on your TV, all this stuff is happening. And you can just do stuff normal or whatever. Or you can right. shoot in this special way where literally you pick up the, the Wii U controller. And that's mm-hmm. like your bow. And the, the screen is like your sight, if you will. And when you're shooting at stuff and it's in slow mo, you could even like spin around or shoot stuff up above, and and the controller screen would actually rotate around, and the main screen would still be on whatever you'd originally been, you know, been on. So it was, they huh. they're kind of trying to do it like an augmented reality type deal. They completely yeah. scrapped that when when they decided that that it was going to simultaneously launch on the Switch and the Wii U because they didn't want the Wii U having an edge over the switch version uh that makes sense yeah so no, i don't i don't know it seems like the the way it is now would have kind of worked out better it i don't know it seems like that would have been a little too much activity trying to like <laughs> swing the big old game bat around up above you and everywhere else trying there, to do that yeah yeah in in nintendo's defense right like they had to deal with people lobbing their wii remotes at their tvs early on and causing all nature of destruction in their household. So I'm sure they were like, the last thing we want is like little Tommy swinging <laughs> around and like knocking out little little Jimmy out cold on the floor. Like, what happened? Like, moblins? Oh, uh, man. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, those, those game pads are expensive too for the Wii U. You wouldn't have to replace it. Yeah, yeah. So, um... Yeah, itch itch brought up too. I think is kind of an agreement with you. He says uh, he gets flashbacks from Star Fox Zero. Yeah, <laughs> of all the games that I want to see get a re-release on the on the Switch, I want to see Star Fox Zero get a re-release on the Switch just so hmm. I could play it with like non-insane controls. Well, you, I don't know. Do you think they'll do that now that they release that? Oh, absolutely. Star whatever it is, the, the uh, new one. I, I think they will. I definitely mm. think that they will. Um, so it, it's it's only a matter of time. That and Super Mario Maker. So. Oh yeah, it'll, yeah, it'll, yeah. It'll be. Although it was genius of them to have Star Fox in that game. 
Yeah, I I really haven't checked anything out on it, so I don't know a lot about it yet. But it looks yeah. kind of okay, I guess. The only thing I, <laughs> the only thing I need to know is that you can play as Star Fox through the entire game. You can play and beat the game as Star Fox. Right, which that would definitely make me buy that version because you actually don't you get a little Star Fox figurine, or is it just you can oh, play no, as no. him? I'll have to. Maybe you I'll don't. Maybe you don't get the. Maybe figure, maybe but... it might have been like a pre-order bonus or something like that. Yeah, I but know. I honestly don't know for sure because literally I didn't even know. I don't even remember what the game itself is called. I just know it's like the game that's not Star Fox but has Star Fox. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> like so. As, as far as I think a lot of people are concerned, that is the Star Fox that they had hoped Star Fox Zero was going to be. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe if it goes on sale one day, it's it's not totally my kind of game, but I'll have yeah. to look something up on it. So um, so you're enjoying Red Dead, though? Yeah, I mean, it's good. Um, I have to say, uh, you know, most open world games like that, um, one thing I have noticed, usually I'll just have a character like run at full speed, even if I'm looking at stuff, you know, I don't go around too slowly or anything. Um, but with Red Red 2, I mean, I will actually just spend like 10, 15 minutes when you're like hunting or doing something like that, just going at a walking pace and just watching everything. It just looks really nice. Um you know, and I'm enjoying it more than like I, I did have Red Dead One. I tried a little bit of it. I didn't really like it. Um, mm. I think people have explained it well by saying Red Dead 1 was more of like GTA in the Wild West, whereas Red Dead 2 differentiates itself a little bit more. So it kind of feels okay. more like a cowboy simulator. So um, what you're saying is just because I, I've been enjoying this one so far, that may not translate to me enjoying this one. Well, I don't know, because now I did play the Undead Nightmare part of it, and I really liked what I played of that. I liked that better than the base okay. game. Um, I don't know. Red Dead 2, it's just a little bit different. It feels le a lot less gamey in some instances. Um, you know, the gun customization and stuff. I I don't know. I, I guess I can't really put it into words right now very well, but I just like it better than the first one. It feels a little more closer to, like, Breath of the Wild and stuff than it does kind of Red Dead 1 in a certain sense. So okay. it, it works a little better for me in that way. So fair enough. And fair I enough. saw you had it you had it on the Xbox. I figured you were gonna play that in uh PlayStation. No, actually, so so what's been happening? Um it's it's I, I've come out of the closet with, with <laughs> Kyle. I guess it's I guess it's time I catch you up. Um so I I am a I've become an Xbox One fanboy this generation. Yeah, ever since um, you got the uh, X, right? Because I know you're gushing over that. Oh man, the the X is a total the X is a total game changer. I mean, every what's brilliant that Microsoft has managed to do this generation is so like they recognize that the Xbox One itself was woefully underpowered, and so mm. it constantly comes in under. Um, you know, under it's always weaker graphics. It's always, you know, harder, you know, lower resolutions, lower frame rates, hits its frame rate targets less often than, than the, um, than the PlayStation four. Right. What was really beautiful is when, when they decided that they were going to make a new console, right? Like the most powerful console in the world is not a minus pcs right like even microsoft right. i don't think believes that these things are meant to really compete with premium grade pcs mm -hmm. but but if you're talking console in your living room that doesn't sound like a vacuum cleaner um <laughs> i mean the one x really is an amazing piece of kit you're able to actually play uh games at the, generally speaking all the games that you're playing on it if it's multi-plat they're higher resolution they're faster frame rates and they are, or even if it's the same frame rate, they hit their frame rate targets way more consistently than the, right. than the um, PlayStation 4 Pro. And also this is true of the, the upcoming Kingdom Hearts games. So far, a lot of the folks that are seeing footage on both platforms are saying it looks nicer on the Xbox. The new Kingdom Hearts 3 looks nicer on the Xbox One X. It looks more fluid. Um, you know, and it's it's not a surprise. Like they have, Microsoft didn't phone it in. They really did a good job on the design of the Xbox One X, um, and they really paid attention to what. There's a couple of things that kind of, 
made Xbox an inferior platform this generation, right? Part of it was the games, but, right? But it's kind of like a self fulfilling prophecy, right? And Nintendo has struggled with this too. If your hardware is underpowered to a certain degree, there's a certain amount of like, why would you bother to invest in an exclusive on a platform where you're going to look inferior or have to do a whole bunch of extra work to look on par with if you'd launched on another platform and oh by the way you're doing all this extra work for a smaller user base right why would you do that so instead microsoft took the approach of look if you had already gone to the trouble of making your game work on our platform anyway know that pretty much all you have to do is change your resolution and add 4K textures. And whatever you optimize for on our base system, you'll be able to do that at 4K on our pro system. Right. And so now instead of it being a why would I bother, it's a why wouldn't I bother? Like if, you know, like it's... So if I went to the trouble... And now if you're talking about making an exclusive, right? Oh, man, who doesn't want to make an exclusive on the platform that looks the best and plays the best? Yeah. So so them convincing people to come over, I think, will be easier. And by them convincing people to come over, um, you know, things like, you know, I didn't think we'd see uh, near. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Me neither. but bam, now it's there. And the only thing that I lament about it is that it's digital only. But it looks effing amazing. It looks and plays absolutely amazing. It totally crushes the PlayStation 4 Pro experience, in my opinion. I, I didn't realize that was digital only. I thought that had a physical release. It does on the PlayStation 4, but not on the mm. Xbox One. Wow. So that's that's kind of a bummer. Uh, there's another one, uh, Setuana. Um, yeah. Soul Sacrifice. Um, that actually was digital only for a while, but now it's actually, they're releasing it in physical, I think in a month. Oh, wow. So that's going to be a physical release. Hell, Hellblade, right? Oh yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, well, and, and I know you've, you've done a lot of convincing of us, I think too, to kind of move from PlayStation to Xbox. Um, I mean, cause just like you're talking about with how they've kind of come out with like these accessibility controls and some other stuff. Cause I, I wasn't really huge on Xbox, but I know the more you do that stuff, the more like you kind of got to give it to them. <laughs> yeah. You know, being able to, being able to actually play my son and I, um, I mean this game. Oh, okay. I love the orange box. So yeah. good. So the orange box, and, and this is a weird thing. So when I looked it up, orange box actually, the 360 version of it was actually the superior version of the game. The PlayStation three version of it ran at slightly higher resolution, ran at Mm -hmm. slightly better frame rate, but had a bunch of crashing and glitching problems that the 360 one didn't have. Wow. So I I read seven or eight reviews that were all saying like, if you want it to look the best when it's running, by the PlayStation three version of the orange box. <laughs> if you want to actually enjoy playing the game, get the Xbox 360 version. So I think it's even better now that like, okay, cool. Um, now it's also, you know, up res to 4k and all that other stuff. So, right. um, and you know, higher unlock frame rates and all that other stuff. So, um, but still that's a single player experience. Um, couch co-op though. Right. So now you're telling me I can play Portal 2 couch co-op with my son in 4K on a console? <laughs> right. Like, sign me sign me the hell up. So I think Microsoft has been knocking it out of the park with backward compatibility. Um, they're not phoning in the backward compatibility. They're not forcing you to... to if you've already owned the games, you don't have to go back and repurchase them. You just pop right. them in and right. it downloads an update and then you're playing. Um, so I, I thought that was really, really good. The fact that the definitive edition of, if it's a multi-plat, the definitive edition, I'm sorry, guys, it's going to be Xbox One X. Now that said, I do have a PlayStation 4 Pro as well. And Sony is still crushing it with exclusives, right? So yeah. not completely delusional, right? Like <laughs> if you want to play games like Detroit Become Human, which is definitely a game worth getting and playing, um, your best experience with that and and only real way to play it is going to be on PlayStation. And the best way to play it is going to be on PlayStation 4 Pro. 
Yeah. So, um, yeah. So the itch says uh, he's not going to be uh, going to Xbox at this point. So he says no exclusives, which I, I, I understand that what you're saying is the exclusives don't appeal to you. <laughs> there's, there's quite a few really good exclusives that I think folks that are missing out, even if you're not going to go one X, I think that there are enough exclusives to maybe go with the base model and catch some of these games while mm -hmm. you can. Um, especially because Microsoft at least is making the statement that backward compatibility is not just a gimmick that they're hoping to apply this generation. They, they claim that over half their, their gaming uh, that they're recording on the system is uh, folks actually playing backward compatible titles. So in one form or another. Hmm. Um, and so the pitch that they're making right now is that for the foreseeable future, they want to have more incremental revisions to their consoles. And they want to seriously, they, they want to do those revisions with backward compatibility up front. Yeah. And so now yeah. if they do that, I don't know. This is Microsoft, right? The, the the wind could change direction tomorrow. But that's a far cry from Sony going, nobody wants to play their old games. And then they give us 17 re-releases of Shadow of the Colossus. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so um, now I, granted, they're doing it a bit differently. They're like fully remastering and updating the games and all that other stuff. But but still, I mean, there's only so many times I want to buy Shadow of the Colossus, right? Right. So um, so they kind of acknowledge that people want to play their old games, but really what Sony is saying is that um, we don't want to support you enjoying your previous investments in a way that doesn't require you forking over more cash. Whereas Microsoft seems to be saying, look, buy it new or bring the old one. We don't care as long as you fire it up on our console yeah so which i kind of really really kind of um you know respect uh about that so that's that's got me going and and so um exclusives i got a little bit sidetracked but exclusives on xbox if you haven't checked it out you should recore definitive edition uh cuphead uh ori in the blind forest ori in the will of the wisps which is the sequel that's going to be coming out this upcoming year there's going to be a battle toads game coming out next uh next year um there's also the forza games hey look i know people love to hate on forza <laughs> I, I actually downloaded the forza horizons demo the latest one yeah pretty friggin impressive it's it's pretty good um the graphics are pretty amazing the control is pretty tight seeing the seeing the 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 seasons like change while you're in the middle of the race is kind of pretty cool um so uh, now, you can say that those aren't true exclusives because they're also available on the PC. That said, for me, um, PC gaming is not really something um, I do a whole lot anymore. I don't have any issues with PC gaming. I understand you're going to play, you know, you can build a better rig, you can play at higher frame rates, all that other stuff. I don't know. For me, I guess um, what I really like about my consoles is that there's even with having to do the installs and download patches and all that other stuff, I don't have to install drivers for my controllers to work. Right. I don't have to, um, you know, update my video card in order to make sure the game runs at all, like type of thing. Um, whether I'm playing on the base model Xbox or the Xbox one X, the game will play to some acceptable degree. Um, and same thing with the PlayStation 4. So um, with the PC, you're, you're forking out a lot more money to play the game, you know, better. And even if you're not forking out the more money, let's say you get a modest PC, like 500 bucks, you know, 800 bucks. Um, you're probably doing a lot of screwing around with drivers and updates and all this other stuff just to just to get the game in a playable state. I don't have time for that anymore. I just want to pop in the disc. If it needs to install, fine. I'll go have dinner. I'll come back after dinner. I'll play Red Dead 2. I don't want to like get it, install it, fire it up, and then find out, oh, either I can play it in a way that it looks like ass, or I have to go buy a brand new video card that's going to be another $300. Like, I don't, that's not fun to me. So, 
Yeah, I mean, and I have a PC as well. I honestly, I don't do much gaming on it. Um, I mean, it it's nice because Steam and you have the digital sales. So if something's yeah. on there super cheap, you know, I'll buy something like that. But just like um, I'd bought Darkest Dungeon on there. But the problem is you can put hundreds of hours in that game. And for all those hundreds of hours, you're going to have to sit your, at your PC instead of like if you get on Switch, you can take it around Absolutely. with you. And, you know, so I, I'll do my PC for like very specific things or if there's a really good sell. But I'm kind yeah. of the same way where it's just more convenient to just pop the disc in and let the Xbox auto update and just not have yeah. to deal with any of that so i i do have less anyone think that i'm a, a pc gaming hater uh, i'm looking <laughs> at my steam library right now i've got 115 games on here i'll tell you some of the gems uh so i've got uh, 20xx i've got alan wake which is one of those you know to to our person in the chat's comment earlier arguably not an exclusive right it's an xbox one exclusive but you can also play it on pc so I got Alan Wake, Alan Wake's American Nightmare. I got the Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures. <laughs> um, I've got the Apogee Throwback Pack, mm. which probably people are like, what the hell is the Apogee Throwback Pack? Um, this thing, this thing is pretty interesting. So the Apogee Throwback Pack, if I can load it up here, it's got uh, Blake Stone. I don't know if anybody even remembers that. But uh, yeah, it's got... Uh, um blake stone it's got rise of the triad it's got um what else we got on here blake stone is a, it's like an old school like a wolfenstein-esque type 3d game um so kind of very cartoony in its presentation um i can't even see the i think there's other things in here too like uh Probably like Captain Keen and some other stuff like that, right? Uh, I don't know if Commander Keen's in there, but it does have uh, Halloween Harry. Um, it got renamed. It wasn't called Halloween Harry anymore after it got renamed. I don't remember what they renamed it to. I think Alien mm. Storm or something like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Um, but um, lots of really good games in the throwback pack. Uh, I've got Bastion, uh, A Bird Story, Black Ice, Bro Force. Um, Burnout Paradise Ultimate, uh, Prisoner of Ice, The Cave, Child of Light, um, Crisis, Crisis Warhead, Dead or Alive uh, 5, um, Deja Vu, Deja Vu 2, Doom, Double Dragon Neon, DuckTales Remastered, the entire Duke Nukem collection. I mean, Duke Nukem 1, 2, 3, Manhattan Project. Um, for Duke Nukem. I got the Escapists, the entire Fear trilogy. Um, uh, Final Fantasy IX, Tomb Raider, uh, the new Tomb Raider, and, and it, also the entire Tomb Raider collection. A uh, really yeah. interesting game called Hacknet. I should do a stream of that sometime. It's probably the closest I've ever seen a video game come to actually capturing what it's like to be a hacker. Um, if anybody's ever seen the movie Hackers the with Angelina Jolie when she was super <laughs> young, um, if you've ever seen that game or if you've ever seen that movie, playing the game Hacknet is actually it's like the game version of being in that movie. Hmm. Um, so it's kind of neat. Uh, Freedom Planet, uh, the entire Half-Life collection. I got some uh, full motion video games like Her Story. Um, I got other games like Hollow Knight, Life is Strange, Night Trap, or in the Blind Forest. Um, so tons of games. That was just that was just a handful of them. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely not a definitely not a hater of of PC at all. Now, if I was to tell you the last time I played any of those games, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, like like where did I actually play and beat? um alan wake and alan wake's american nightmare on my xbox one yeah right where did i actually play and beat quantum break on my xbox one right and and one of the interesting things is that um that that fact that the games aren't exclusive it's actually a really cool thing like you you wouldn't think it is right because it's like well i can buy it on pc or i can buy it on xbox well here's the thing that's amazing so that was my steam wishlist or my steam not wishlist my steam library mm -hmm. um a portion of it 
Microsoft has actually got me to start reconsidering whether or not I'm going to purchase something on Steam or Microsoft Store. Because if I purchase it on the Microsoft Store, either on my Windows 10 PC or on my Xbox One, for a bunch of the games, I get it on both. Like, for example, right. Pinball FX, I have on both my Windows 10 PC and my Xbox because it's 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 um, Play Anywhere. Yeah. Cup, Cuphead, I have on both because it's Play Anywhere. Alan Wake, I could have had Play Anywhere, but I I bought it on the i bought it in physical copy um which i still don't regret uh but quantum break was kind of the same thing like i was really torn like do i just get a digital copy of quantum break and then i have it on both windows 10 and xbox or do i get it in physical ultimately i decided to get it in physical um but but they they have me at least thinking about it um if i get it on playstation 4 that really is exclusive by all meaning of the word. I have no idea if it's going to work on the next console. Right. Sony's still being kind of cagey as to whether or not backward compatibility ever again is something that they want to do. So every time I buy a PlayStation 4 exclusive title, I buy it going, I better play this while my PlayStation 4 still works and while Sony's still on board with it because it'll really suck if I put this into my backlog and then you know, five years later, six years later, I decide to go back to it and my console doesn't work and right. It's not supported anymore or I can't download the patch or whatever. Right. When I'm buying it by and large, when I have a choice, which console, you know, I'll double check a review just to make sure it's not totally broken on the Xbox. Um, But, but unless it's like completely broken, I'm just going like, all right, Microsoft take my money. And in some cases I'm literally like pinball effects. I think that's a digital only title um why the hell wouldn't i just buy it on the xbox and also have it on pc because because occasionally i do game like we'll finish up a show or something and i'll decide you know hey i want to play some some back to the future pinball or something like that or now the the bally tables the bally and williams tables are available Mm -hmm. um on on pinball fx3 so i don't mind i don't mind doing that um but i'm not like I think part of it is the configuration of my house. Like my, my computer is on the third floor in the loft. My couch and my 55 inch television, 4k, blah, blah, blah is downstairs in the living room. Right. So when I walk up the stairs from the garage and reach the living room (laughs) from like a nine to 10 hour day at work, do you think I really want to go? I know it's only two more flights of stairs, right to arguably play a better version of the game on my pc but it's just it's not so much better to me that it's worth it and then plus i'm not with my family anymore right like right. I'm in my own space which is kind of cool for broadcasting and things like that or doing like a, a, a review or something it's less cool when like just because i want to play this game doesn't mean i don't want to be in the same room as my wife and son right right while she's reading a book or you know he's watching you know something on netflix or something like that so that's that's kind of, I guess, where I'm coming from. But I totally get, you know, I 100% agree the better way to play it's on the PC uh, graphically and things like that. So, yeah. Well, and he mentioned, too, in the comments, um, asking if we ever do games. Um, that is something we've talked about doing before. Um, I know that we just have issues about... Um, at least on my side, internet speed's kind of an issue around this area. I think um, time zones are a challenge, too. Yeah, that that too. Um, I'm in a separate time zone from Chris and everyone else, so it's kind of a challenge working around that as well. So I, I'm sure eventually we'll have something up where we get a chance to do that, but just haven't got to that point yet. So. Yeah, we're working it out. I'm actually looking into a Mixer looks like it's going to be a, another Microsoft thing. Mixer looks like it's going to be the platform to to kind of make some of that multiplayer streaming happen. Yeah. Um, so they they really Microsoft is kind of doing a pretty good job, uh, I think, with that. I'm not delusional. I'm not claiming that it competes with Twitch or anything like that. Um, but I don't think that they're necessarily trying to. I, I think Twitch Twitch is really good for. I'm a single gamer wanting to kind of talk with my audience and present to my audience and play some games. Um, Mixer is really intended for like group collaborative co-streaming, right? Like I want to play the same game as you and 
I want people to be able to see me and you and, you know, if we're playing with three or four other people, those three or four other people as well. So, so it's, they're both streaming platforms uh, and Twitch is still definitely the more popular and more known platform, mm -hmm. but I got to hand it to Microsoft. I think Mixer is trying to scratch an itch that um, fr from day one with us doing this, you know, um, video broadcast, you know, Google Hangout type thing, we've wanted to be able to do something like this. Uh, with very low lag and streaming, we've experimented with it a couple of times and it hasn't really worked because, you know, this platform just really isn't built for that. So, um, but Mixer is. So I'm not saying that we're going to switch over 100% to Mixer, but I wouldn't be surprised if in the future uh, you saw, you know, you're probably going to see us doing some more, some more streaming of, of game actual content. And that's probably going to be through a platform like Mixer. Yeah, we'll have to see... Uh how Red Dead 2 multiplayer works out too, because I tried GTA 5 multiplayer and I feel like it's a lot of people just kind of uh, shooting all the time when you're not wanting to get shot and stuff. So hopefully yeah. they, they yeah. fix some stuff in that because see how that goes. But yeah, yeah, one of these days we might get around to it. So Kyle, my friend, it was a great surprise to have you on the show. Oh, it was a great surprise to be on. <laughs> <laughs> So the itch network, I, I'm looking forward to keep us posted, please, about your uh, about your I'm intrigued now. I'm going to go check out your existing documentary uh, style Let's Play that you did. Um, and I'm also looking forward to your new upcoming one for Pokemon Red. So definitely uh, hook us up with some either hit us up on Twitter. Definitely follow us and, and share some of that stuff. We'll retweet it uh, as we see it. Um, and drop some comments, you know, down in the in the doodly doo uh, when you've got some new stuff. Uh, we'll definitely subscribe uh, and and check that out. So also, if you liked what you saw, um, come on back, chat with us again in the future. It's been really kind of fun having you there in the chat and exchanging our different our different views. So um, I completely respect your your uh, embracement of the PC dominance. So I used to be that way. I don't know. I think <laughs> I got a feeling. It's just me getting old and tarred out. So, but um, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Once I go into retirement and I have infinite time. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Maybe, maybe I'll go back to PC gaming, right? Start putting but together that game museum. I think that's the other problem for me too, just to kind of wrap it, is that I work... I'm on a computer all day for my job. I deal with computer and computer stuff all day. So even, I, I don't know, like when I come home and I decide to do recreation, I want something as detached from what it is I've been working on all day as yeah. possible. So for me, it'd be kind of like if I was a mechanic and then I came home and my, my hobby was like, you know, working on old cars. I think I, after a certain point in time i'd just be like you know work on cars all day i don't want to work on them to unwind also yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I, I think if you're someone that's that you've got a different you know you got a different uh, career path or something like that absolutely i used to love tinkering with computers and building them and you know even trying like the newer bleeding edge versions of windows now i'm like i just want this thing to work i, I don't want to be seeing so, so that's actually what has irked me about some of the consoles, right? Is when I pop in a game and I see a loading screen for the installer that's going to take like an hour. Right. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's I, I accept it now and I just pre-plan, right? It, it was annoying when I was used to like PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 2, pop it in and expect that you're good to go. Um, maybe there's a patch, but you can probably do without it. Um, toward the end of the PS3 generation and all of the PS4 and Xbox One generation, very early on, I just had to get used to like, when you buy the game, you're not going to play it that day. So just forget about it. Don't even expect it. Just pop in the disc and walk away. <laughs> the, the next day, tomorrow, you can play your game. I, I, I can live with that. Now, if tomorrow I came back and found out the video card needs an update or the mouse right battery died because I didn't charge it or something crazy like that, I'd be like, you know what? Just forget it i don't even i'm done <laughs> the, the one thing i will say is cheaper to replace a keyboard i had a issue with my controller and i had to buy a new one and oh my gosh like 
60 bucks for a controller. I, I don't envy that. So that is that, you know, that is true, especially with the switch, right? Yeah. Which was, uh, I, I never ended up, I decided not to send my switch back in for repair at all. Oh, and, okay. Cause they wanted me to send the whole console back and they couldn't guarantee that I wouldn't just end up with a refurb. And I'm like, oh. I got like 60 hours into Breath of the Wild, plus all the other, like, I am Setsuna. I was like at the very end. It's like, right. And and this is before Nintendo Switch Online, right? So right. I had this choice, like send it in while I still have the warranty, which is two months before the ability to cloud save. So so send it in and potentially lose all my progress and get a used unit back in exchange for my launch model. Brand new thing, right? Or just buy another controller and deal with the fact that the controllers that it ship with are fucking garbage. <laughs> so I decided in the end, okay, 70 bucks, right. I guess. How many hours did I have into those games? Is that is, is my time worth that $70 to not have to go through all that again? Right. Yeah, I guess. So, um, and then I went back on it. And when I got there, I saw that I could get a Hori controller because it was only the left stick that was broken. Uh huh. Um, I was able to get a Hori uh, controller to slide in that's like Zelda themed for like 25 bucks. Oh, well, there you so, go. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, like, okay. And I only play it in handheld mode. The Hori controller you can only use in handheld mode. Uh huh. Um, but, but yeah, so 25 bucks and I saved myself a whole bunch of you know, lost game saves and all that other stuff. Right. So, but, but yeah, PC, I mean, I guess in a way, like it can kind of be cheaper and kind of not like my keyboard, I think was cheaper, but my mouse is like a, I think this is an $80 mouse. Oh no, I just used a $10 mouse. <laughs> so, no, I have to have the, I have to have the extra buttons and everything. Like, like when I game, like, crisis this this is the this is the exception to everything i just said about about, <laughs> about console versus pc gaming i do not fucking care like the only way to play crisis is on a high-end gaming pc period right. end of story yes i know that xbox just launched the crisis trilogy in backward compatibility mode it so if you read the reviews here's what's hilarious Running Crisis on the Xbox One X in backward compatibility mode, I would argue, gets you the performance that the game should have had when it launched on the 360. Because, <laughs> like, the 360 version of the game was, like, super cut-down graphics and all this other stuff, yeah. right? And it's running at, like, 15 frames a second in some scenes. Oh, right? great. Now, on the Xbox One X, it can actually sustain 32 frames per second. Nice. Don't don't ask me why thirty two. Like why they picked that. <laughs> <laughs> like, so they, sixty was too much, but maybe thirty was just like no. We can go. We we can give you a little bit more. Go for go for thirty two. But anyway, yeah. if you're gonna play Crisis, the only way to play that game, and, and I would even say Skyrim games like Skyrim games mm. like Crisis, those games are clearly meant to be played on a PC. Games like um quantum break and games like alan wake and things like that these are games that were designed first for a console and then ported to the pc mm. generally speaking console games ported to pc don't fare quite so good right they tend to be more unstable they crash more they, they right they get abandoned in the patch process way quicker you know, you, you, th those are the games that you see falling out of Steam after a couple of years because they just don't. You can still download it if you bought it, but like nobody's committing to continuing to patch it for Windows 11, Windows 12 or whatever. Right. right. Um, it's not like games like Doom where it was birthed on the PC. Someone will make sure it continues to run into perpetuity. Right. Kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Same thing with Skyrim. Same thing with, um, you know, these, you know. Uh, what was the other game that I mentioned? I forgot. Uh, I forgot too. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which means we're past time and we should close it up. For yeah. The evening. So, <laughs> folks, I hope that you've enjoyed our chat. Uh, I think um, if you like open world games, if you like story driven games, uh, if you like first and third person games, I think you would enjoy Red Dead too.
Yeah. Yeehaw. Yeah. If you like Blazing Saddles, you'll probably like it too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so folks, uh, we will be back uh, with another episode. I'm working on some interesting guests for you guys. So just wait till you see some of the stuff that we got coming up. I really think that you're going to like it, but you're going to have to stay tuned.